SpaceX is a big step closer to sending its giant Starship spacecraft into orbit, completing an engine-firing test at the launch pad on Thursday. 31 of the 33 first-stage booster engines ignited simultaneously for about 10 seconds in South Texas. The team turned off one engine before sending the firing command, and another engine shut down. But still enough engines to reach orbit, tweeted SpaceX's Elon Musk. Musk estimates Starship's first orbital test flight could occur as soon as March, if the test analyses and remaining preparations go well. The booster remained anchored to the pad as planned during the test. There were no signs of major damage to the launch tower. NASA is counting on Starship to ferry astronauts to the surface of the moon in a few years, linking up with its Orion capsule in lunar orbit. Further down the road, Musk wants to use the mammoth Starships to send crowds to Mars. Only the first-stage super-heavy booster, standing 230 feet, 69 meters tall, was used for Thursday's test. The futuristic second stage, the part that will actually land on the moon and Mars, was in the hangar being prepped for flight. Altogether, Starship towers 394 feet, 120 meters, making it the biggest and most powerful rocket ever built. It's capable of generating 17 million pounds of liftoff thrust, almost double that of NASA's moon rocket that sent an empty capsule to the moon and back late last year. SpaceX fired up to 14 Starship engines last fall and completed a fueling test at the pad last month. Flocks of birds scattered as Starship's engines came alive and sent thick, dark plumes of smoke across the Starship launch complex, dubbed Starbase. It's located at the southernmost tip of Texas near the village of Boca Chica, close to the Mexican border. Now four astronauts fly SpaceX back home, end five-month mission. Four space station astronauts returned to Earth late on Saturday after a quick SpaceX flight home. Their capsule splashed down in the Gulf of Mexico just off the Florida coast near Tampa. The U.S.-Russian-Japanese crew spent five months at the International Space Station, arriving last October. Besides dodging space junk, the astronauts had to deal with a pair of leaking Russian capsules docked to the orbiting outpost and the urgent delivery of a replacement craft for the station's other crew members. Led by NASA's Nicole Mann, the first Native American woman to fly in space, the astronauts checked out of the station early Saturday morning. Less than 19 hours later, their Dragon capsule was bobbing in the sea as they awaited pickup. Earlier in the week, High wind and waves in the splashdown zones kept them at the station a few extra days. Their replacements arrived more than a week ago. That was one heck of a ride, Mann radioed moments after splashdown. We're happy to be home. Mann, a member of Northern California's Wailaki of the Round Valley Indian tribes, said she couldn't wait to feel the wind on her face, smell fresh grass, and enjoy some delicious earth food. Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata craved sushi while Russian cosmonaut Anna Kikina yearned to drink hot tea from real cup, not from plastic bag. NASA astronaut Josh Casada's to-do list included getting a rescue dog for his family. Please don't tell our two cats, he joked before departing the space station. Remaining behind at the space station are three Americans, three Russians, and one from the United Arab Emirates. Wakata, Japan's spaceflight champion, now has logged more than 500 days in space over five missions dating back to NASA's shuttle era.